Hi there, we're now going to get started on um, financial mathematics and that's all about the finances behind mathematics. No wait, the mathematics behind finance, that's it. The mathematics behind finance. Now what do I mean by that? Well if we look at anything like a car, a uh, car or um, maybe just some savings in the bank account or anything that has money value okay so money value now that's not really a word money value we u we use the term monetary value monetary value and forgive my spelling I might be wrong but you know what I mean monetary value is when something has financial value and though that value might change over time so for example if I buy a car for a certain amount I might not be able to sell it for that same amount or I might sell it for more or less um, depending on, on what the scenario is so the value of a monetary value might change and there's three main reasons why it changes one is interest okay interest interest is when uh, the an, an amount of money grows over time so for example you borrow money from the bank to buy a house but in the end you have to pay back more than you actually borrowed because it earned interest the second reason why it might increase is because of inflation okay inflation inflation is all about prices increasing over time now because banks charge interest okay products end up going up in value okay so over time for example when I was young a bread cost two rand okay now a bread is closer to 11 rand or 12 rand so because of time and prices increasing over time that is called inflation okay and finally a value might decrease because of a depreciation okay depreciation now depreciation refers to things that lose value over time so instead of growing in monetary value it loses monetary value okay that's like if I buy a car I might have paid for the car a hundred thousand when I bought it but when I sell it three years later I'm definitely not gonna get a hundred thousand rand back okay so it loses value so a hundred thousand might only be worth fifty thousand in a few years time and it's not because of any other reason then the value of the asset or whatever thing I'm talking about has actually decreased over time because of wear and tear and actually just not being a new thing anymore anyways let's just talk about the rate of change now rate of change that is the percentage with which my values change over time rate of change refers to the percentage with which my value changes and we're going to use an I to represent the rate of change and this can be for inflation or interest or depreciation okay let me say interest inflation or depreciation is going to be represented with an I but what's very important it will be expressed as a percentage percentage okay so you'll lose a percentage of your value over time in other words percent and please remember that percent means divide by 100 so if we're talking about 8% is the rate at which my savings increase over time then I'm actually talking about 8 divided by 100 okay now with that in mind we get two types of changes okay so obviously something can grow or something can depreciate we're going to use growth and decay okay and we can get simple growth simple growth and or decay okay decay just means it decreases over time or we can get compound okay compound growth or decay now what is the difference well I'm briefly going to explain it but not the full version okay in simple growth my growth or let, I have constant growth constant 
growth or decay okay so if my savings increase with 100 rand in the first year it will increase with 100 rand in the second year my growth will stay the same however in compound decay I have constant growth or decay rate okay so in other words this rate stays the same every year and the rate is calculated just on a different amount every year so if my um, if I had a thousand rand in my savings and in my first year I get a hundred rand interest then in the new year I'll have a thousand one hundred rand and now my interest will be calculated on the thousand one hundred rand okay for this one if I had a thousand rand in my first year's interest is a hundred rand yes I have a thousand one hundred rand in the account this year but I still just work out my interest on the thousand the original thousand while for compound I will work it out on the new value the thousand one hundred rand but let's leave it there for now and in the next video we'll look at how do we get to formulas that can that we can use for these two uh, scenarios See you in the next one.